All right, what's up, boys? It's Hyphy. Uh, I know it's been a little bit since I posted any YouTube shit. That's mostly because of uh, a corona. I'm currently in the process of moving. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it in other videos slash my stream. And corona's making moving and filing for inspections at my new house and shit a lot harder than it should be. I was supposed to be moved into my house like halfway through last month or like at the start of this month. And because of corona, I probably won't be moved in until the end of next month or halfway through next month. So that's where a lot of my time has been going. I've also been spending a lot of time streaming at twitch.tv slash Haiti. So if you want to check that out, I try and stream every weekday, usually starting around the morning slash noon. Noon if you're EST, uh, morning if you're PST. So check that out if you want. Uh, the reason we're doing an Afro guide is A, she's dummy OP right now. Fuck this bitch. Ban her in your rank games. You've probably seen her in SPL terrorizing. And B, people in the stream have requested it. I've actually gotten a couple DMs on Twitter asking for an Afro guide. Also, if you want to see something, you can DM me on Twitter at twitter.com slash the height Literally anything. I'm, I probably won't respond to you, but I read every single DM. Even if I don't respond, I always read them. So you're welcome to DM me, and I will see whatever you want. So just let me know what you want to see. Anyways, we're going to head right into the Afro Guide. I hope you guys enjoy. Remember, I have a bunch of other really in-depth mid lane guys in, uh, guides in the description. So go check that shit out. If, if there's any character you want to learn, I might have done a guide on it already. So check the playlist in the description. I hope you guys enjoy. Remember to like, subscribe, sub, all that fucking shit they tell you to do. Uh, and share it with people. Anytime I get a view, that's an ego boost for me, Pog Champ. All right, let's get right fucking into it. All right, boys, we're gonna start this off with builds, like every other guy. I know a lot of people just want to see a build and then they don't give a fuck about anything else. They just want to get right into the game with a cool build and try out the character. I think that's fine. I still recommend you watch the entire video so you know you can learn and know exactly what this character does. But you know, if you just want to see the build, here it is. My Afro build is, <coughs> sorry about that, Mage's Blessing, a Lost Artifact. This would be your level one build. Then you'd want to get at your, your first item should be cooldown boots. Then you'd want to finish Doom Orb. And then third item, if they have a lot of healing, I'd get Divine Ruin. If they don't have healing, you can get Spear Desolation. Then fourth item, you can get Breastplate of Valor. These items are also interchangeable. So you can also get third item Breastplate and then go Divine Ruin if they have healing, Spear Desolation if they don't. That's also fine. It just depends if you think you're going to need the CDR right away or if you want a damage burst. <clears throat> oh god, my throat's kind of fucked. Sorry about that. I also want to quickly go over this with this build right here, just these four items, you are over capping in CDR by 10%, which I know a lot of people hate. They think, oh my god, over capping, that's the fucking sin of smite. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think over capping is fine. I think, don't overthink it. If you're over capping a little, that's fine. Not a big deal. It's completely okay. All right. Then after you have these items, I'd go next item Soul Reaver, and then I'd sell my Mage's Blessing for a Pythagorean's Piece. Also, obviously you'd want to go Beads, Second Relic, Aegis. I'm not, you know, level, I'm only level one, so I can't buy Aegis, but this would be the ideal mid lane build for me. <coughs> oh my god, my throat is fucked today. Hopefully I don't have the Rona, maybe I'm blind. And with this build here, you see you have 10, 20, 30, 40 cooldown. You can also sell your boots and buy a 1500 pot, and you can buy any item you really want. I'm a big fan of E-Staff, and then you'd be saying, wait, but if I sell my boots and I buy E-Staff, I don't have max cooldown anymore. I'm after, I need max cooldown. Normally, if you have your boots sold, you'd have a 500 pot right here, a power uh, potion of power, which gives you 10 CDR. So with the potion of power and this build, you have uh, max cooldown, all right? You have max cooldown, 20% pen, and survivability with uh, movement speed here, health here, and defense here. So this is the ideal Afro build, in my opinion. There are some other builds, there are other items that are very good on her. Let me fucking find them. Lotus Crown, I think, is a really good item. You could always sub out Lotus Crown for Breastplate of Valor. I just like Breastplate of Valor because it gives you a bunch of physical prots and you're usually getting go by physical characters. But if you want to sub, sub, if you want to sub, 
uh, Breastplate of Alice with Lotus Crown, I think that's fine as well. I think Lotus Crown is a very good item, especially if you have a fed jungler, you can help them dive. But I think either the last build I showed you at Breastplate or this build right here is my go-to slash ideal Afro build. And that's what I recommend you try. It does a lot of damage, you have a lot of CD, it goes kind of sicko mode. All right, and the next thing we're gonna go over is Afro's kit. This is her one, two, three, four, and passive. I'm not gonna show you any mechanics. I highly say, I highly recommend you stick around and watch the mechanics part because there's a lot of shit this bitch does that not many people know about. I'm not gonna go over the mechanics right now. I'm just gonna go over the kit itself, what each ability and passive does in case you don't know what Afro does or you've never played her or you've never played against her, you've never read her abilities. That's what I'm gonna go over right now. Of course, if you know everything her kit does, you're welcome to skip this part of the video. I recommend you don't, because you know, there's always one or two things you can learn that you might have not known before. But right now, we're just gonna go over all of her basic abilities, starting with Afro's passive. So let's get right into that. All right, so the first part of Afro that we're gonna go over is her passive, Center of Attention. So you can see my passive meter is right here. It just looks like a giant heart with a heart in it. What Afro's passive does is for every ally or enemy, so yourself, so your teammates or enemies that you're near, you gain four physical and magical protections. So, and for each one that you're near, you'll see a pink heart appear on my passive. So as you guys know, there's an Odin bot right there, right? If I move in range of this Odin bot, the range is 70 meters, I get one heart here, right? So that gives me one stack of my passive and increased protections. If I move even closer to where this Odin bot is in my passive range, I get two. Now this Odin bot's in my range, I get three. This one, I'll have four. And if I walk all the way over to these Odin bots over here, I'll have seven stacks. Obviously, the cap on this is nine, because, you know, you have four allies, uh, five enemies. But realistically, you're never going to have nine. Honestly, I've, I don't think I've ever once in my life had nine people on my passive as Afro that I can remember anyways, because usually the team fights aren't that close to where everyone's around you all the time. Maybe in non-conquest game modes, but usually people are more spread out. You know, someone's flanking, stuff like that. But basically for every person near you, you gain more physical and magical protections, and you can visually see that by these pink hearts. Obviously if I leave these guys, get out of the range, pink hearts go away. I come into these guys' range, and pink, pink hearts happen for them. I'm also gonna go and switch teams quick. Uh, where's the change team thing? See, now these Odin bots are on my team, and the pink cards still appear. This is just to show that, you know, it's for enemies and allies, and obviously her passive goes over walls. And I'm going to show you some cool things you can do with their passive when we get into the mechanical section. But, all right, that is Aphrodite's passive center of attention. Can you fuck off, minions? That's Aphrodite's passive center of attention. All right, the first ability we're going to go over is Afro's first ability, Kiss. All right, so here's what the target of her Kiss looks like. Kiss has two different effects depending if you kiss an enemy or an ally. Uh, the first effect I'm going to show you is if I kiss an ally, it'll link us together making us soulmates. Remember this link can be broken if you guys get too far away from each other. It'll start flashing and then the link will break. There you go. But if the link starts flashing and you notice and you get close to them, it will stop the link from breaking. But basically when you kiss an ally, it makes it so they are soulmated to you. You can kiss multiple allies and you'll soulmate whoever you kiss what the fuck why didn't my kiss hit this guy hello what kissing someone does is it makes them your soulmate but gives them bonus movement speed for you and them here it is soulmates empowering you with increased movement speed so both of you move faster it also gives them 70 percent of all uh, mana you gain so if i have a bunch of mp5 this odin will gain 75 percent of that and if someone meds me they'll get extra mana on that med because you know obviously med gives you mana another component to the kiss is jealousy i'll show you what jealousy is all right so this is obviously if i kiss an ally it'll you know link to them and they'll become my soulmate but if i kiss an enemy oh these odin bots are cc immune so let me let me find some non-cc immune odin bots for you guys hold up uh, let's go here all right now these odin bots are uh, they can be CC. If you kiss an enemy, they'll be stunned. It is a one second stun on enemies. Oh, I should probably have reduced cooldown as well, huh? Ah! Reduce cooldown. So, kissing an ally makes them your soulmate, giving them increased uh, 
movement speed and more MP and more mana gain. Kissing an enemy stuns them. And there's one last mechanic with the kiss where I have to change back again. Hopefully I'll be able to show this in a jungle practice. I don't know what I am. I don't know if I am. There's a jealousy mechanic. So if I have an ally kissed and I stun someone, oh am I gonna be able to make it in range? And I stun this Odin here, they'll get stunned and they have that little thing above their head. And this guy has this little effect on them, which means he's jealous of the person I kissed. So my soulmate becomes jealous, getting 20% increased damage on whoever I kissed. So say this Odin would hit that Odin for 100 damage, and I kissed him. Ugh. Is it 20%? It is 20%. Instead of taking 100 damage, they would take 120 because they get 20% increased damage. So... Kissing someone makes them your soulmate. You gain, give them a bunch of bonus shit with movement speed and mana. It get, it's a stun on enemies. And if you have a soulmate and you stun someone, your soulmate gets extra bonus damage on whoever you stun. And that is Afra's first ability, Kiss. It also interacts with all her other abilities, but we're going to go over that when we get to those abilities, all right? All right, Aphrodite's next ability is Back Off. Yep, it is Back Off, all right? Here's what it looks like. It's a giant circle targeter. And what it does is when you use it on an enemy, oh god, excuse me, obviously these Odin bots are CC immune, but when you use it on an enemy, it'll do damage to them, slow them, and knock them back. This Odin bot is CC immune, so you can't see the knockback and the, the knockback and the slow, but it does do that. If you have a soulmate and you use back off, as you can see, whenever I use back off, they have a back off as well. So if I use mine, a back off happens around them as well. The back off on them doesn't knock back though. Aphrodite gets a CC knockback. Uh, whoever you're linked to doesn't get that. So he only does a damage and a slow. I do damage, a slow, and a knockback. Now you may be saying, if you guys are standing right next to each other and we back off like this, you could nuke someone, do a billion damage. Well, that's not how it works. A person can only be hit by one back off. So if there's an enemy right here and they were to get hit by mine and Odin's um, back off, it'll only do the damage, the slow, and the knockback of mine. They'll basically immune my part and my soulmate's knockback. So back off is a really high damage ability. It's also a really good peel ability. It just does damage, slows, and knockbacks. If it's on your soulmate, their circle only does damage and a slow. If they get hit by both, they'll only take damage, slow, and a knockback from your back off. Your soulmate's back off will have no effect on them. That way you can't double hit people with this ability, which would be kind of broken. That's Aphrodite's second ability, alright? Now we're going to go into her third ability, Lovebirds. The next ability of Aphra we're going to go over is her third ability, Lovebirds. What Lovebirds do is it's a giant straight line targeter that can hit multiple people. You send them out... It hits everyone and does damage to them for seven ticks. It's seven ticks of damage. That's what it does. So as you can see, I use lovebirds on all of them and they take seven ticks of damage. What else it does is it heals you. So the enemies take seven ticks of damage. When you use it, you get seven ticks of healing. So I'm just going to make my way to, you know, Fire Giant and I'll show you guys the healing aspect. So obviously a Fire Giant hits me. You know... I'm, I'm low HP if I make my way over here, and I use Lovebirds, I'm healing, I get 7 ticks of healing, and if you have a soulmate, let me come over here and kiss an Odin bot, your soulmate will also receive the healing, they won't do, another set of birds won't come out from his direction, but he'll also receive the healing, so if I'm connected to someone and I 3, I'll heal and he'll heal, and will damage anyone in the line in front of us, alright, so that's Afro's 3. Afro's final ability is her ult, Undying Love. What Undying Love does is the moment you click it for two seconds, you are invulnerable. To damage, to CC, to everything. You are a walking god. No one can touch you. It looks like this. For those two seconds, no one can touch me. I am completely immune to everything. I can't be CC'd, I can't be damaged, I can't be anything. You are basically a walking god. You can also use this ability while under CC to cleanse the CC immediately. So if I get stunned and I'm under the stun, instead of using my beads, I can just after walk. And then the stun would go away, obviously, and then I could walk away while ulted. And if I have, a, you know, a soulmate connected to me, let's wait for my ult to come back up. If I have a soulmate connected to me, 
and I ult, he would receive the ult as well. So if you have like a super hard late game carry, hunter, or assassin, you can kiss them, ult, and for two seconds you make them god. They can do whatever they want. They can fucking run into five people and take no damage. So that's Afro's ultimate ability. God mode, basically. But that's Undying Love, and that's Afro's entire kit. The next thing we're gonna go over is Afro's level order, all right? So level one on Afro, you're always gonna get, wanna get Lovebirds. I never see a reason not to get Lovebirds. That's always gonna be your level one uh, get, that's uh, your three. At level two, you always wanna get back off. I can see very, very niche places where you'd wanna get Kiss, but nine times out of 10, you'd wanna get back off, especially in mid. At level three, again, there are very niche cases where you need a fight so you can get Kiss and Kiss your jungler. But normally you get another level of birds. Level four, you want to get kiss. Level five, you want to get your alt. At level five, if you don't feel like you're gonna need your alt, you can hold the point and get another point into love birds. That way you can clear easier. But I just like having the safety of my alt all the time. So at level five, I get my alt. At level six, I get love birds again. Eight, uh, level seven, love birds again. Level 8, I hold a point. Then at level 9, I max out my birds and, and get another point in my alt. Level 10, you want to start leveling your 2. Level 11, the 2 again. 12, the 2. 13, the alt. 14, the 2. 15, the 1. 16, the 1. 17, the alt. 18, the 1. 19, the 1. And 20, the ultimate. Alright, and that's going to be Aphrodite's leveling order. All right, the next thing we're gonna go over is Aphrodite's mechanics, how to fight with her and all that jazz. The first thing we're gonna show you is her basic damage combo, all right? This is the combo you'd wanna use in a 1v1 situation, nine times out of 10, this is usually what you're gonna wanna do, all right? So say this is my enemy, I'm looking at this Odin bot right here, and I see him, I just wanna kiss birds auto two, and then auto him down while he walks away, all right? This is an insane amount of damage. People never respect Afro damage. That's insane. I'll slow it down for you if you guys didn't see it. Or like if you just want to see it slowed, I guess. Uh, you'd kiss, then go for birds. And then while you kiss and bird someone, they're still gonna be stunned. So you can sneak in an auto and then back off. And then the back off knocks them back so you can auto them again. And then they're slowed so you can auto them down while they run away. Or if they try and fight back at you, obviously you're getting healed by birds. So their poke isn't as relevant. And they're slowed by back off so you can just walk away juking their autos. But that's our ideal one-on-one -on -one damage combo. It's kiss, kiss, birds, back off auto. Kiss birds auto back off auto. Sorry. So here it is. Kiss birds auto back off auto, and then keep autoing them down or juking and walking away. Remember, your birds are healing you. So if you're in a one v one skirmish and you get your kiss off into birds combo off, even if they're hitting you nine times out of ten, you're gonna win the trade because you're Aphrodite and you have healing. All right. So that's your go-to damage dealing combo. All right. Now, if you're connected to an ally, usually. I like connecting to anyone in my front line that's gonna be running at their team. What you usually wanna do is you wanna watch where your ally is and spam back off when he dives someone. So obviously I connect, say this is my jungler, I'm walking with them, I'm connected to him, there's an enemy over there, he runs to the enemy to hit him, I back off doing a bunch of damage and slowing the enemy so my jungler can get the execution kill. Usually when you're connected to someone, you're using your birds and your back off less as, you know, damage abilities and more to help your whoever you're connected to. So they see an enemy, I'm going to back off birds, try and hit them with the birds, but as long as he's got the healing, that's good. Ideally, if you're connected to an assassin, you just want to keep them alive. You're looking to always, oh, they're getting go alt birds to get them out, back off to slow whoever's going on them, kiss to stun whoever is on it. If you're roaming with someone who is kissed, so let me just show you this right here. I'm gonna kiss this guy and say this guy is standing next to me and I'm roaming with him. And we catch someone, I'm gonna kiss birds, do my full combo. Obviously I can't do it here because I'm breaking the link. But I do the full combo, which will get someone down to a very little HP. And then I have a jungler, a support, a hunter, whoever this is, that has bonus 20% damage that can finish this guy off, alright? 
So you always want to, if you're linked to someone, you always want to think, what will my abilities do? Yes, it's good to always hit people with your three and do damage, but say there's no one in your range and you just want to keep your carry, like your Kali or your Robin or Susano alive, you can just throw birds into the air or into a general direction near them to try and hit people, and, and but you're keeping him alive, which is the important part. You're backing off when he needs it. When he, someone goes on him, you CC him. If he gets dove, you can ult him, you can bird him, you keep backing off for him. That's the ideal with Afro. I love gods that can dive in, like Robin and Kali, when they jump in, they jump into someone, they take the burst damage from their jump, and then they just get with a back off, which is a lot of fucking damage. People don't realize this. Also, here's a really cheeky trick you can do with Afro that only works if you're on lower ping, and in a realistic game, like if you're in a ranked game, I'm gonna be honest, this is never really gonna help you, but it can help. So say I'm in a game, and my team gets Ares ulted, or my team gets Nuwa ulted, stuff like that. And I have two teammates here who are in comms, so I can tell them both, Hey, just stand still, I got you, right? If you ult while connected to someone and kiss someone right away, both the teammates will get affected by the ult. So here, I'll show you. See that? So he had the ult with me, and then he had the ult. So if you time it really precisely, like really precisely, you can immune two different things on two different people. So say both these guys have a tick on them of some sorts, I can immune the tick for him, kiss this guy, and immune the tick for him. Obviously, doing this against like Ares ult and stuff, I wouldn't recommend, because the moment your kiss breaks with whoever you're ulted, they lose the CC immunity and it transfers over to the other guy. So I'd only recommend doing this in really niche cases. I don't see any realistic cases where this can work, but A, it's in the game, maybe you can make it work. If both these guys have like a Jean Kuei card on them that's about to kill them, you know you can ult, immune some ticks and immune some more ticks, stuff like that, right? So obviously this trick isn't like too like, oh my god, he saved two people, but it can help, alright? Another thing that your kiss can do is if your kiss is on enemies, let me come over here, kiss is on enemies, it's a skill shot. So if I throw my kiss like this, it's gonna miss. If I'm at max range and I throw my kiss and back up, it's gonna miss. When you're kissing an ally though, as long as they're in the initial targeter, let me put it back on normal cast, like this initial targeter, as long as when you click left click, this initial targeter is on them, the kiss is gonna follow them. I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna wait for this Odin to come here. I'm gonna wait for him to walk out of the range, left click. Oh, okay, I fucked it up there, but you got here, here, I'll show you again. Left click, see that? I was moving back and he was moving away, and even though he wasn't in the targeter anymore, I still had him in the targeter where I left click, so the, the kiss connected. This works with all types of abilities. So say you kiss someone as they're about to jump, when they land, you guys will be connected, all right? So I'm gonna show you that one more time, hopefully I don't fuck it up. I'm gonna move away while he's moving, and I fucked it up. Okay, wait, I'm already connected to him. That won't even work, hold on. Let me break this link. <laughs> so he's, we gotta wait, he's gonna be moving away, I kiss him while I move back, and my kiss still hits him, even though he would have been out of range, alright? So those, so those are the ideal things you want to do with Afro, obviously remember your ideal damage combo, kiss, birds, auto, back off, kite with autos, or just juke around. If you're connected to a teammate, you want to look to amplify their damage and back off, kiss when someone goes on them to amplify their damage even more, birds in their general direction to make sure they get healed, but also so you can maybe hit whoever's on them to, uh, to do damage and heal, and when they uh, are getting gone on, you want to ult. Alright, so you want to idolize your soulmate connection to help whoever's in your game to carry, and if you don't want to do that and you want to be the carry yourself, your main damage combo, kiss, birds, auto, back off. Also, just a cast of birds, if you randomly hit someone with birds or hit someone with back off, that's a lot of damage. Afro's kit does a lot of damage. People disrespect this girl. This girl hurts, man. She does a lot. She's still a mage at the end of the day. She will fuck you up. In the 1v1s in mid lane, you always want to be looking for trades. If the mid laner always, anytime walks up, you always want to go kiss, birds, auto, back off. Because you're healing, you're always going to win trades. You always want to be looking for them. Don't put yourself out of position. But remember, if he ever walks up, don't fucking let a mid laner do that. They walk up to clear the wave, fuck you. Kiss, birds, auto, too. And if they, if you're against a Giannis or like an Agni that using his two to clear the wave, 
a Hera that has to walk up to the wave. I'm gonna show you what you do, all right? Oh, I need to change teams so these minions don't fuck me up. So say I'm walking into a minion wave, and there's like an enemy Giannis right here who's walking up to clear. Fuck him! Kiss him! Three him and the creeps at the same time, and then back off. Don't let him clear for free. You win every single 1v1 because of your healing. You always want to apply pressure if you can. If they're walking up to the wave to clear, say it's an Isis, she's wind gusting, cancel that shit, birds, auto, back off. Your birds can hit their entire t them and the wave at the same time. Even if I'm coming in at an angle, right? Like say I'm over here, we'll just let these minions spawn. Come on, minions. So say I'm coming at an angle like this, I can fucking, uh, I can kiss them here. I'll use my birds on only the front end and them there and damage them. You're gonna kill these archers eventually. That doesn't matter. What matters is applying pressure. You should always be healthier than your opponent because you can always constantly birds and heal yourself. Remember, don't allow the enemy mid laner to make you his bitch. They're your bitch when you play Afro. They ever want to walk up to clear a wave? They're gonna get a full combo. They're gonna feel that shit. And your combo hits them and the wave at the same time. So you want to line it up. So I hit him and the minions behind him. Say there are minions behind him. That way I hit everything, all right? So don't let any mid laner bi bully you around. You are the fucking bully as Afro. This bitch looks all nice and sweet, but she's a fucking bitch, bro. She'll fuck you up. Her healing and her damage are insane. Don't forget that. A lot of people, when they play Afro, they kiss to someone. Oh, I need to go change teams again. No, let's go. A lot of people, when they play Afro, especially in mid, they think, oh, I'm a support for my jungler, for my ADC. I want to kiss them and help them. Fuck no! If you can help them, that's good. That is very good. If you have a fed jungler and you're backing off, you're birds and you're kissing, you're alting, that's really good. Enabling him to do good is good. But if you need to carry, your character does a lot. You can uh, you can kiss, birds, auto, back off, auto, and this will almost one-shot someone if you have the damage build. You do a lot. Don't tunnel vision thinking you have to do one of these things. You gotta find the balance of doing both. You gotta find the balance of, you know, doing your damage and the balance of, come here, Odin, and the balance of keep my soulmate alive, back off for him, alt for him. You have to find the perfect balance. So remember, if you have someone that's popping off, you can enable them. But if not, you can also pop off. Your character hurts. Don't underestimate yourself. Don't be someone's bitch when you play Afro. You are the bitch. That's what you gotta remember, all right, boys? All right, now we're gonna head on into Conquest? Yeah, how to play her in Conquest. That's what we're gonna head into. All right, there are two little mechanics about Afro. I forgot to show you guys some. Those are coming in post-edit. That's The first one's gonna be now. The next one's gonna be, you know, the clip after this. The first thing that you guys need to know, this is one of the biggest part about Afro, is how to use your passive in Conquest. Remember, your passive will always get a stack on it when someone's near you, enemy or ally. So when you're doing speed buff with your jungler and you're chilling here, you should have one passive stack, so one heart. If a second heart appears, that means someone's invading, because that means there's a second person around, and obviously it isn't someone on your team. Same goes for mid lane. Say you're just chilling in mid lane, clearing wave, and then you want to check these mid camps right here and go for mid camp. If you walk up right here and you get a passive stack, that means there's someone either around this corner, behind this wall, around this corner, getting ready to gank you. So make sure you're always looking at your passive, you knowing that someone could be around. You know, you're going to Gold Fury Pit. You walk up to like here, and then all of a sudden you get a passive stack. That means there's someone over here, someone over here, someone behind this wall, getting around, ready to gank you. You should never be able to get hit. You should never be able to get corner baited and corner ganked well in Aphrodite. Because remember, always be looking at your passive and HUD bar. Someone could be ganking you. Use this as like you know wall hacks. Use this as a cheat. You want to come over to red buff and check it. You're right here, and your passive goes off. That means there's gonna be someone here. You know, so make sure you're always looking at your passive. It literally tells you when you're about to get ganked. So never fall for like corner baits as afro because of this passive. The last thing that I quickly forgot to mention about lovebirds is if you're getting chased, you never want to like, say I'm being chased. You never really want to, you know, oh, I have it on normal cast. Let me put it on instant cast again. Oopsie. Uh, default. You never want to, you know, turn around birds and then keep running. What you can do is, oh my God, I forgot to get reduced cooldown. I'm an idiot. Reset cooldown. Reduce cooldown. 
what you want to do is you want to just run away and use your birds in a straight line and whoever's following you will get hit while they're chasing you like let's pretend this odin is chasing me right oh well fuck you know what he got ahead of me that time let's see he's chasing me i'm running away and i birds while running away he's gonna get hit behind me because i'm out running the initial box if they're right behind you they're gonna get hit by that so whenever you're running away you never have to waste yeah, time in birds time. backwards obviously i missed there but you never have to like turn around and birds backwards you can just run in a straight line and then birds like this and they'll get hit right behind you obviously if there's a group of people behind you and you want to hit a lot of them you can turn around and birds backwards but if it's just one person you can run in a straight line and birds. all right i'm gonna show you guys level one with the afro what you do uh, i'm a little late walking out of the base but you know this is what you would do level one Level 1, you'd come right here, your jungler would be on the speed buff, you throw your birds over the wall to hit the speed buff, at least for your jungler, then you make your way to mid wave. Obviously I'm level 20, so I'm going to one shot the wave, but normally you want to birds the wave, and then auto attack the archers down, and then your archers plus your warriors will kill their warriors. Then you'd come to these right here, you'd want to back off, and then you would have to auto attack both of them twice I believe, maybe three times? And that should kill them and that's your level one so starting level one on afro pretty simple nothing too big or like confusing oh, about it all right last thing i want to go over is uh fighting in conquest with aphrodite all right i'm gonna show you what i mean by this because let's come over well we'll start with mid lane in mid lane combat, 9 times out of 10, what you want to do is remember when I was talking about in the mechanics section how you always want to punish the enemy mid laner for walking up to the wave? In Conquest, the, one of the best ways to do this is have this corridor right here warded, and whenever they walk in here, just go for kiss, birds, auto, back off, and run away. People fall for that shit all the time. If they come here to clear this wave, you kiss birds the wave and they're kissed right there so you hit them as well back off auto and that's how you trade in lane that's what you're going to want to do nine times out of ten obviously they're coming around this corner it's the same process kiss three auto two so that's how you want to trade trading is pretty simplistic nothing too deep about it and remember try and trade as much as you can be wary of your mana because early game your mana is low but if you have a soul in that's getting totems that doesn't matter too much so don't like trade like 80 times and then oom yourself but don't be afraid to trade if they walk at you walk at them you win that shit fuck them now for fighting at objectives you know what? i'm just gonna show you a gold fairy because gold fairy spawns faster we should also probably go kill that aries bot or he's gonna take my fucking base this aries bot is gonna end the game oh my god <laughs> let's go clear this fucking wave so he doesn't just fucking end the game hold up aries stop Chill! Clear the area. He doesn't even give a fuck! No! Please, let me work. Oh my god. This dude serious? Oh my god, the amount of DR on this guy. One more cast of my combo should kill him. Kiss, birds, auto, back off. Oh, well, it doesn't miss the back off, but it feels DR, man. So when you're fighting on uh, can't, on Gold Fury in here, if you're fighting from back here, like, you know, obviously their team would have Gold Fury Ward and have pressure, and you guys are back here, you want to kiss your front line that's, like, here, here, and then whenever your front line peaks corners like this, or like this, or when they move up into this area where it's contested, you want to be making sure the moment they walk into range of an enemy, you back off to get free poke damage in. Because they're going to trade with the enemy frontliners, and you're going to add extra poke, and then you can just throw a birds out and heal up your frontliner. Also, if your frontliners go really deep and dive and the kiss breaks, make sure you have your ADC, who should always be near, right next to you. That way you can quickly kiss them, and now you have a new soulmate. Now you and your ADC can move up together, and then while moving up, in case you get flanked from here or here, you have a soulmate connected to you. So if they go on you or your ADC, you know, you can kiss, peel, back off, peel, heal, all. So you keep you and your ADC or whoever's in the back line with you alive whenever your front line gets out of, you know, kiss range. But normally when they're just in this like little jack off like fucking, you know, when they fucking like 
fuck you, my ward, and they run away, and then they pull up, and they get my ward, and then they run away. When they're in that little fucking situation, you want to kiss your front line, keep them topped off with heals, back off whenever necessary, and you get poke. And then usually you're never going to need to ult them, but, like, say some weird shit happens, and, you know, they get Ares ulted into a pick, you can ult them. But the moment the link breaks or they go too deep, make sure you kiss who's ever next to you. Your ADC, sometimes it could be your jungler, even though your jungler is usually, like, you know, over here flanking. Same goes on Fire Giant on this side. It's the same premise, you know, it's same as Gold Fury. And so you'd stand, like, here and here. Frontline would be here and here. And then when they move too far up, you'd kiss your ADC. So same premise, you know, I'd be right here. My frontline would be he uh, right here and right here. And then when they move up to, like, do shit, you help with, like, birds to keep them topped off. Back off, shit like that. All right? So playing Afro and Conquest isn't too 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 hard you just gotta know when you want to be going for damage and when you want to just be saving your teammates and when you want to go for both like if you're with your adc if you're with your adc and they need healing but if you wait like a second and a half you can do damage with your kiss and uh damage with your birds we're just gonna let aries push the phoenix man he earned it he's fucking pounding all right so say i'm right here and the aries is uh not aries Say I'm right here with my ADC, I'm kissed to him, and he's kinda low, but we're in the middle of the fight, don't be afraid to just wait to use your birds. Move up a little, you see an enemy, kiss birds. Now your ADC is getting healed and your birds did damage. You don't have to keep everyone topped off at all times, although if you're in a disengaged state, like both teams back off, you usually want to heal everyone up, but if it's in the middle of the fight, try and always use your birds offensively and defensively at the same time. Never just like, you know, they're in front of you here and you throw your birds backwards. Never do that. If you're ever fighting and you're running away, fucking, like, like watch this, they're chasing me. Uh, I can just throw my birds back and keep running, alright? You can always do that. Like, ne you never have to use your birds for defense. If your tanks are here, never throw your birds like this. Like, if you're kissing them, don't throw your birds that way. Throw your birds forward. Because if you hit someone, that is a lot of poke. So my tanks here taking damage, fuck it, throw a birds out. Anyone wants to stand in that, they're going to take a bunch of damage. Alright, so make sure you're using your birds uh, at the best times to get healing off and to do damage. You never want to do just one when you can do two, you know? Alright guys, that's the Aphrodite guy. Thank you for watching. Remember, like, subscribe, fucking follow me on Twitter, Twitch, all that shit. Uh, helps me a lot. Gives me a big out old ego boost. You know, I don't make any money off YouTube yet, but you know, with a, with a few more subscribers, I think we're a few hundred away, I can actually start making fucking money off this. That'd be lit. Alright, but thank you for watching. If you want to see something, comment it, follow me on Twitter, DM me either, or just let me know. Again, sorry about, like, uploading so late. Moving's a bitch, and I hate it, and I hope it ends quick. Alright, thanks guys. Goodbye!